Hello and welcome to another AIC Productions video. Today I want to take a few minutes and go over these two laptops. Uh, the one on the left is one that I've recommended both it and its previous generation quite heavily. It's been a great budget system. I featured in a couple of my other videos. It is a Lenovo IdeaPad 120S. Now, as it sits, it cannot be upgraded unlike the 110S, but it is still an excellent, inexpensive laptop. You can buy them on Amazon currently for about $190, $189.95 is I think what I saw right before starting this video. And for that price, it is an excellent, excellent laptop. Uh, it has excellent build quality, has an excellent keyboard, it has an excellent screen, um, it looks nice, but it is a budget laptop, and so it only has 2 gigs of RAM, 30, 32 gigs of storage, and it has a slow Celeron dual core processor without hyper-threading. So it is very much a basic single-use computer. I love it when I go on the road because it means I can check my email, I can browse a few web pages, I can remote into systems at work where that do all the heavy lifting for me so it's a little more than just a screen to access those systems. And I recommend it definitely strongly as a great budget laptop. However, I'm always on the lookout for something that might have a bit of an edge over the Lenovo because I've tried Dells, I've tried other HPs, and when I recommend a system, a new system to somebody, it's just hard to beat this for the price. Uh, you have to step up a lot of money before you get something that's worth it. Now, I came across this laptop here a couple weeks ago and it is something that I think in a lot of ways competes with the Lenovo 120S and that is the HP Stream 11 4th Gen and there's actually a couple different models of the 4th Gen so this one is specifically with the N3450 processor and I'll make sure I link that in the description it's a little bit more expensive than the Lenovo but for your money you get a 4 core Celeron processor you get 4 gigs of memory and 30 or excuse me 64 gigs of storage so you double your CPU cores you double your memory and you double your storage for about twenty to thirty dollars more depending on where you buy it I'll put the link in the description on Amazon prices do fluctuate there uh, quite a bit so typically it's been that twenty to thirty dollars more than the Lenovo but it's not all gravy so starting off with um, I do have a skin on the Lenovo. I can't find one for the HP yet. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just haven't found one to buy yet. Uh, I do recommend getting these vinyl skins. It keeps your laptop looking basically brand new for the long haul. But some things that the Lenovo specifically has is it does have actually three USB ports because it has um, a USB Type A here that's a USB 3. You also get a USB type C and on this side you get another type A which is also USB uh, 3.0. So you have two USB 3.0s and a USB type C. The HP only has two USB type A ports. One on this side and another on this side. They both have HDMI they both have micro SD card slots. They're both fanless. They both have combined micro microphone headphone jacks, which is nice. Uh, they're both 11.6 inch screen. They both have um, 1366 by 768 resolutions on their screens, but the screens are different. Let's go ahead and open them up. And you'll have to excuse me with the skin on the Lenovo. I did a terrible job um, installing it. I usually do pretty good on getting these installed well. Um, once again, the keyboard on the Lenovo is excellent. The only thing I don't like is the location of the power button. They're doing the Apple thing where they include it with the rest of the keyboard, which I understand is reduced costs, but when you put 
the power button next right where the delete key normally is you're going to get a lot more accidental presses of that power button shutting the computer off by accident um, the mouse pad while a bit small has a nice clicky feedback the keyboard has a nice feel to it, the nice crisp uh, uh, tactile feel to the keyboard. Lenovo always has. I've not had a Lenovo that didn't have an excellent keyboard. Um, the ThinkPad touch pads currently are awful, but uh, the keyboards themselves always a pleasure to type on. Going over to the HP. First and foremost, when you pick this up, actually when you pick up the Lenovo, the materials it's made out of feel nice. They feel much nicer than you would expect on such a budget system. The HP, while it feels sturdy and not flimsy, um, the plastic it's made out of reminds me of like early 2000s GM or Ford cars. It's just cheap, scratchy plastic. Um, the molding or flashing on there, it's got some rough edges on it. Um, so the materials it's made out of just don't feel as nice or as premium as they do on the Lenovo. Just gonna open that up. And that extends to the keyboard. Now the keyboard, it doesn't have quite as nice of tactile feedback on it, but it's not bad, it's not terrible. The touchpad, once again, it just doesn't have that nice clickiness to it which means for a quieter typing experience and this may be a personal preference but I I like the keyboard on the Lenovo more I just do the HP does however have a power button separate from the keyboard it's up here in the corner so when you hit the delete key it's over here by itself and you're not going to accidentally power down your system one thing these both do that I absolutely dislike is if you look at the arrow keys the up and down arrow keys are these little keys here and of number of direction keys those are the ones I tend to use the most especially on stuff like this to scroll up and down web pages I don't use the right and left I use up and down I wish they would make that these at least full-size keys and I don't think any manufacturer does that anymore hardly especially on budget systems so that's just an overview of these two laptops you can see the screens they unfortunately don't have the same picture because they are these are being and they change pictures every time you boot it up. They both have really decent screens with decent viewing angles. And I'll go into the screens a little bit more here when I do um, a video about the performance of the laptops. But very reasonable screens, especially for this price point. You know, you're not expecting a Cadillac when you're spending less than $250 on a laptop, a brand new laptop, I should say. Uh, they both have excellent battery life. They both have nice big batteries. You can feel that when you pick them up. There ain't much hardware in there for the compute section. It's almost all battery when you open these up. Uh, the HP, neither of them is upgradable from their current configuration. I have opened them both up and neither is upgradable. What you buy is what you get. Now, I'll go ahead and end this here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer those. And you should see in the next day or two a video going over the performance of these two systems because I definitely think that's where you'll see the biggest difference is just in the performance of these systems and where you'll probably start making some choices if you're looking to buy a sub $250 laptop. Anyways, this is Carl again with AIC Productions and I hope you have an amazing day.